Good morning. We're in the fifth in our final week of our series called The Head-Heart Connection. We all desire deeper meaning and a clearer sense of purpose in life. We know it in our heads and we know it in our hearts. We make choices, lots of them, in view of what our head and heart tell us about meaning and purpose. So many choices, but sometimes it all comes down to a moment and a single choice, like the one we hear about in today's gospel. Here, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Throughout the Gospels, and especially in Mark's Gospel, Jesus is constantly on the move, on a journey that ultimately leads him to the cross. Today's story tells us that the man who ran up and knelt before Jesus was wealthy. In that culture, if you had wealth, you didn't run. You had people to run for you or run to you, but you did not run. The young man's urgency conveys his confidence that Jesus is who he says he is, and that he has this rare opportunity. His question is fundamental. Tell me the key to eternal life. When we think of eternal life, we probably think about heaven. But the connotation here is broader. When scripture references eternal life, it also means living your best life right now, one full of purpose and meaning. And Jesus answered him, you know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. One could get this common Ten Commandment answer from anyone at the time. This young man is full of urgency and intensity, and he gets this somewhat vanilla answer, don't murder anyone. So why does Jesus answer like this? By giving an unsatisfying answer, Jesus heightens the young man's desire for a deeper, more significant answer. And it works. Because he replied and said to him, Teacher, of all these I have observed from my youth. The rich young man says that he is already following the commandments and that it's not working for him. It's not enough. The young man's heart tells him there is more to life than just religious rule-keeping. Essentially, he's saying, Jesus, I believe you can tell me how to live a life that is about more than just observing the rules. Tell me how to live a life of purpose and meaning, depth and richness that touches that more that I'm longing for. I know you have the answer to the whole in my heart. And so what is Jesus' response? It says, Jesus, looking at him, loved him. This, interestingly, is the only incident in the Gospels that tells us Jesus responded with love. We know Jesus always responded with love, but this time the Gospel points it out. In this context of love, he challenges him. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. This is not a condemnation of the guy's wealth. Though he himself lived simply Jesus had plenty of very wealthy friends. With love, Jesus explains to the young man the truth of his heart. His heart is shaped to be a close disciple and nothing else. 
Not even all his wealth will satisfy that longing he feels. In his response, at that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. He went away sad and returned to his former way of life and all his possessions, doubtlessly heartbroken, his head and his heart disconnected. He clings to his things, ignoring his heart, which had urged him to run to Jesus for his life's true purpose and meaning. How crazy is that? As the saying goes, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Maybe we're all a little bit insane. We've all been let down by things, lots of things, that failed to deliver when our heart, what our hearts are aching for. And we go right back to that way of thinking. We're sure the next time will work. We just need a little more. The billionaire Howard Hughes was once asked how much money a man needs to be happy. And he answered, just a little bit more. We can all think that way sometimes. Just a little more money, a little more time off, a little more support from my spouse, and then, then I will finally be completely happy and whole, all the while having the sinking feeling that we won't. After the rich young man walks away from Jesus, Peter speaks up for himself and those who have not walked away. Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and followed you. Peter points out that he and the other apostles have long been doing what the rich man did not do. And Peter wonders, what's in it for me? We can sometimes feel that we should follow Jesus out of obligation because our parents or our pastor told us to. But that's not why Jesus told us to follow him. Most often, Jesus pointed to something else, our own self-interest. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age and eternal life in the age to come. And so I invite you to reflect on what you typically assume brings you happiness and wholeness and how well it's working for you. Maybe test Jesus on this. Give up something this week. Something that's a crutch or a comfort, a consolation, your reward to yourself. Something you return to again and again that never really completely satisfies your heart. Maybe for you it's money and possessions, your stuff. This week, give something away. Write a check to your favorite charity a check that maybe hurts a little. Maybe for you, you turn to pleasure far too often. Skip a couple meals, or wine, or beer, or Netflix, or YouTube. Maybe for you, you need to feel important that people are paying attention to you. This week, fast from social media. And when you fast, turn to God. Use that time for some extra prayer time. Prayer offered during fasting has special power. Fasting intentionally creates a void in which we can better hear the Lord and respond. Why do it? Why should I give anything up? What do I get? Only this. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, 
There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more. A hundred times more. That's pretty impressive. Connect your heart and your head and God will bless you abundantly.